Are you struggling to get more than two kills per trip at Krill? Do you spend 15 minutes prepping and 20 minutes getting KC just to get one kill before teleporting out? Do you get a pit in your stomach when you hear the word YAR? Well then this guide is for you. Sit back, relax, and watch how we can transform this into this and extend our trips to over 20 kills. Krill Tutsaroth is probably one of the hardest God Wars dungeon bosses because of his devastating melee attack which hits up to 46 and drains your prayer by half. This means that tanking Krill using the walk under method is not going to yield the results you want and might even end up costing you money in the short term. However, in this video I'm going to show you a ranged method of killing Krill where if done correctly he will never touch you. If you want to go straight to the method, jump to the timestamp listed on the screen. Otherwise, stay tuned to cover the gear and inventory we're going to be using. I'm going to show you two gear setups, a high level setup and a low level setup. The inventories for both will remain the same. To start with a low level setup, I would recommend a Justiciar face guard for the defense bonuses since you'll be definitely making some mistakes while learning. The Blood Fury should be replaced with a Fury, I just don't have one, but they give the same defense and offensive bonuses. I'm showing a rune crossbow here in this clip, but if you have a dragon crossbow, it'll allow you to fire dragon enchanted diamond bolts, which are preferred over runite or adamant bolts. I've got full blessed dehyde armor, which has mixed god affiliation, so I take less damage when entering the dungeon. Just make sure you have one of your god items that's Zamorak related. I have a crystal shield and ring of suffering for the defensive bonuses, of course, and barrow's gloves because they provide great defensive and offensive bonuses for all three combat styles. If you can't afford a Suffering, go ahead with an Imbued Archer's Ring instead. And if you have cash for upgrades, but aren't quite sure of the high level gear setup yet, then I would buy the following items in this order. A Slayer Helm if you're on task, J Necklace of Anguish, Dragon Crossbow, Twisted Buckler, and Masori if you've gotten really lucky at Tombs of a Masket, otherwise stick to the Blessed Dehyde. For the high level setup, I've got Full Crystal, an Anguish, Pegasian Boots, a Bow of Fair Denon, a Slayer Helm, Avery's Assembler, and a Zamorak Blessing. You can do this boss off task and use a Crystal Helm. However, I'd recommend always doing this boss on task if possible. The Slayer Helm makes a massive difference in the speed of your kills, and the faster the kills, the less damage you take from the minions. Of course, the Twisted Bow is best in slot here and just melts through Zamorak, so if you have one, bring that instead. For inventory, I bring three ranging potions, three stamina potions, four anglerfish, six restores, five brews, a mage switch consisting of the ancient scepter, a cult amulet, and mage arena two cape. I bring six restores because once you cross into the freezing river into the Zamorak encampment, your prayer will be drained, so you want to have a little extra in terms of prayer restoration. I also bring a blowpipe for the minions, a gomul's hilt for teleporting to the god wars dungeon, which is a reward from the easy combat diaries, a rune pouch filled with blood, death, and soul runes for casting blood barrage, and a one-click teleport out. Make sure you're on the Ancient Spellbook because Blood Barrage can get you to full health after every single kill. Now, if it's your first time taking on Zamrak with this method, I'd recommend replacing some of the restores or some of the stamina potions, um, and even maybe one of the ranging potions with additional hard food like sharks or anglerfish to make it easy for you to quickly eat up because it's almost guaranteed that you're gonna make at least one mistake while learning this method. So, as far as getting kill count is concerned, Zamrak is pretty easy, which is why I don't bring an ecumenical key. The Zamrak encampment is nice because there are no minions from other gods there, so once you cross the river, all you need is your single Zamrak item to get KC in peace. I find that the imps are pretty easy targets and four of them spawn in the encampment. In the downtime between imp spawns, I'll trap and kill spiritual warriors for some extra KC. All right. The method itself uses a strategy called red Xing. I made a video about this previously, but if you're unfamiliar, when you have a red click and path underneath a boss, the boss will not move. Red clicks have a different implementation in RuneScape's game engine from the traditional yellow clicks that your character makes when traversing the map. 
The red click is what allows us to get to Krill into a cycle where we can move through him and he can't hit us. The method is called 5-0 because we get five hits on the boss for every cycle and he never hits us. Before entering, there are a couple of pre-trip tasks we wanna take care of to make sure that everything is as smooth as possible when we enter. First, make sure you import the tile markers from this video's description by right-clicking on the world map and selecting Import Ground Markers. Second, right-click on each of the minions and swap their left-click attack with Walk Here. If you don't see this option, make sure that the Menu Entry Swapper plugin is enabled on Runelight. This ensures that we don't accidentally left-click on a minion and stop in our tracks. I also like to tag Krill with the NPC Indicators plugin by right-clicking and selecting Tag. This helps to know where his bounds are, so you can give a visual indicator of when you need to make that red X click. Take a sip of your Ranging and Antidote Plus Plus potions, pray melee, walk inside, and drop two pieces of food on this tile. We're gonna use food as our anchor for red X clicks. We drop two pieces of food because the timing for the red X is tight, and it's easy to be a tick slow and pick up the piece of food on accident after the red X, so having two pieces gives us a nice buffer for mistakes. After dropping the food, move to the tile marked number one, take a shot at Krill, and as soon as Krill's NPC indicator aligns with the orange tile as seen in this clip, click the food on tile number two. If done correctly, your character should path underneath Krill and exit at the top left corner of Krill's indicator. As soon as your character's true tile hits the food, attack Krill and immediately move to tile number three. The timing can be a bit tricky to get down, but if you linger on tile number two, you will pick up your food and Krill will catch up and hit you. For tiles three, four, five, and one, simply move and attack as soon as your character gets there, similar to how Bando 6-0 works. It's important to attack as soon as your true tile indicator reaches the square. Don't wait for your actual character to stop moving or you're gonna be too slow. This is an easy mistake for beginners to make. The cycle moves fast, so be sure to keep up. Once you're in a comfortable cycle, pray range because the ranger hits pretty hard and Krill won't be able to hit you anyway. Once you get back to tile number one, the cycle repeats and you'll need to red X click on the food when Krill aligns with the orange square. To be honest, once you get to tile number one and take the shot, you'll need to immediately move on to tile number two on the next tick. So the whole cycle kind of just flows naturally. However, there is one exception. When starting the cycle on a new kill, you need to wait one extra tick before red Xing because Krill spawns farther away from you. This is contradictory to when he is chasing you as you depart tile five to restart the cycle. When you move from tile five to tile one, he is actually one tick closer than when he spawns and makes his way towards tile number one. By waiting an extra tick after Krill spawns, you quote unquote, set the cycle, so to speak. You can see in this clip, I red X too early. Krill's NPC indicator clearly is not aligned with the orange square, and I don't exit perfectly from the top left corner and Krill hits me for a 30. I correct it on my next cycle, but just know that the timing for the first red X is slightly longer than subsequent red Xs. Once Krill is dead, kill the mage minion, that's the black demon, with your blowpipe and cluster the range and melee minions together for, to blood barrage them down. You can prayer flick them if they're off tick, uh, however you don't have to. Continue praying range through this entire part. Lastly, don't forget to pick up your food on tile number two and redrop it roughly 10 to 12 seconds before Krill respawns so that it doesn't despawn on you. All right, so now we're gonna go through a full example kill. We're gonna to wanna to start all of our kills on the tile marked number one. Once we're there, we're gonna to wanna to throw up, protect from range and rigor if we have it, and attack Krill as soon as he spawns. Remember, we have to wait an extra tick before we click on this anglerfish. As soon as Krill lines up with that orange square, we're gonna click the food and move to tile mark number three, attack, four, attack, five, attack, and so on. Now we're in cycle. As we move back to number one, we wanna right click on our food and prepare to click it as soon as we are able to, and as soon as his tile lines up with our orange tile over there. You can see that while wearing the Slayer Helm and being on task with the Bofa, we are completely melting through Curl's defenses. And honestly, most of the time, it really shouldn't take you between four or five red clicks to get a full kill. Once Krill is down, we're gonna target the black demon. He is the mage minion. Here we can actually um, prayer flick between range and melee if they are off ticked. 
um, and feel free to use your blowpipe specs to heal up a little bit here if you're low on health. Basically, we wanna leverage rigor to DPS down this black demon as quickly as possible so that we can stack up the ranged and melee minions for using our blood barrage. So he went down pretty quickly, that was good, and now you can see I'm just lining up the mage and melee minion and using blood barrage along with augury to make my attacks a little bit more accurate. If all goes correctly, you should really end this fight with basically full HP, ready to start again. Well, that's all I have to share about killing Krill Tutsaroth and hopefully amplifying your kills to get 20 plus kills every single trip. Hopefully this 5-0 method has really helped you out and you've learned something new about red Xing or killing Krill in general. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps my channel grow. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you.